years after Hurricane Katrina damaged or destroyed 77,000 homes on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, there are still hundreds of families without a permanent place to call home. The Wimbish family is just one of them. It seemed like the way they were acting after the storm, you know, FEMA's going to help, these people are going to help, but they wasn't. And three years later, you just never imagined it's still going to be like this. The tears Holly Winbish sheds are for her 73-year-old father, Ernest. Ernest has been living in a bedroom of his storm-damaged house for the past yeah, eight months. Right after Katrina, yeah. he and his family lived in a FEMA trailer. But after yeah. cancer-causing formaldehyde was discovered in thousands of FEMA trailers, it was hauled away and replaced by the two-bedroom Mississippi cottage you see next door. We had me, my son, his wife, and two kids. So. I took a bedroom in here and fixed it up as best I could and moved in it. There's better places to live, but it beats a tent. You know, that's about all you can say for it. It beats a tent, it beats a fiend material. He don't want to feel like he's a burden on somebody else by staying with them and having somebody else take care of him. Katrina's flood waters swallowed the house he's called home for the past 50 years. Put a lot of water in it, a lot of muck and mud. It uh, penetrated the walls, got the insulation, got the electrical, uh, messed up the floor, curled all the tile, you know, and uh, just put black mold throughout it. But yet he's turned one room into a house. His closet doubles as a makeshift kitchen. The roof leaks and there are mold stains on the ceiling. And there's no working shower or bathroom sink in the house. It's a little depressing, you know. Uh, sitting in a in one room, you know, uh, it's not the most pleasant thing because you can't move around a lot in there, you know. Uh, I put a refrigerator in there, that, that's a blessing in itself. But I can't put a stove. I'm really not thrilled about having to gather clothes under my arm and go right there to to take a bath. Wimbish lives on a fixed income. He gets by with only a monthly social security check. He had hoped to qualify for a grant to repair his home or get more help from FEMA. They cut the amount of money that I was allowed to get to fix it up. I just had enough to buy materials. That's it. So I've got to do the work myself, you know. And I have a heart condition, so I've got to it takes quite a while to get something done sometimes. As soon as my t chest tightens up, I have to stop, and go take a breathing treatment, get, get back to normal, and then I can go back at it. So I do that three or four times a day. I'm not putting in a lot of time doing the work, just putting in a lot of time trying to do the work. To say the 73-year-old Hancock County man has his work cut out for him might be an understatement. I have some uh, electrical issues. I've got some plumbing issues. Good bit of insulation to do, good bit of sheetrock, floating, painting, uh, putting doors in, windows. And I got some walls on the side of the kitchen I'm gonna have to take out and put back in. Why? You know, well, uh, that water had enough salt in it and everything to just make the wood rot at a pretty good rate. On top of that, time is running out for the Wimbish family. Ernest has got to get the work done soon. Mississippi's temporary Katrina housing program ends in a few months and the cottage will be taken away. Everybody's got to come back in. The Mima cottage goes by the end of the month and there's no other help. Once it's gone, it's gone. Stress, worry, um, 
because there's two small kids who need need a home and then I have my dad whose health isn't all that great so it's really important to, to get the kids and him in a, in a stable house. I try to keep myself from getting depressed by simply just knowing I'm sooner or later you know things are gonna go my way and when they do I'll have it nice. In Hancock County, Al Showers, WLOX News. County families are closer to getting back into their homes tonight thanks to the Giving Circle. The volunteer group from Sarasota Springs, New York has made 16 trips to South Mississippi since Katrina to help people. As Hancock County reporter Al Shower shows us tonight, the Giving Circle is nowhere near finished. Without the help of volunteers, we would have never even come this far. Tally Adamant says the help she's getting from the Giving Circle this week puts her goal of moving in before Christmas back on track. Without the volunteers, I wouldn't be standing where I'm at. Eleven Giving Circle volunteers from Philadelphia and New York are working to put four Katrina victim families back into their homes. Since the storm, the organization has worked on more than 35 homes in the Bay Waveland area. The people need some help and we're in a position to help. The Giving Circle's motto, if you will, is uh, communities helping communities. I just find it really sad that they've had to wait so long for some help. Helping to rehab homes is just part of what the Giving Circle has done for the area. They've hosted giveaways for expecting young moms, Easter egg hunts and Christmas toy giveaways for needy children, and mental health seminars for first responders and weary homeowners. We try and do events um, throughout the year that kind of raise awareness about what's happening down here so we don't let folks forget. You know, folks down here certainly haven't forgotten. The folks everywhere else seem to have forgotten. It's absolutely overwhelming. Mississippi would have never came back without the help that we have been given, and I have been blessed by God. Blessed that her days in this FEMA trailer are numbered. In Waveland, Al Showers, WLOX News. Amazing group of people. The Giving Circle will send another round of volunteers to the Bay Waveland area later this week. The following is an editorial by the management of WLOX-TV. More than three years after Hurricane Katrina, the coast is blessed to have hundreds of volunteers still coming to our area to help us rebuild. The Giving Circle from Saratoga, New York, made its 16th trip this week to the Bay Waveland area to help with recovery. Not only do these volunteers help rebuild homes, they also help rebuild lives by providing mental health seminars for first responders and wary homeowners. In addition, they have provided Christmas toys for needy children and organized Easter egg hunts. Over in Biloxi, a different group of volunteers, 49 Lutherans, recently completed a week at Camp Biloxi. One member of this Pennsylvania work group wrote about the experience saying, I and the others on our team felt very honored, thankful, and blessed to be able to come down and lend our support. We brought home so much more than we ever gave. These volunteers say they plan to keep coming back to the coast until we are completely rebuilt. They represent so many other volunteer groups who have made the same pledge. All these volunteers symbolize a wonderful spirit that still prevails in America today, the willingness to help those in need. And each one of us in our own way needs to find a way to repay some of this generosity. This has been an editorial by the management of WLOX-TV. We invite your comments on this or other issues. That would be a great day. Well, we all know what a major role volunteers have played in the coast recovery, but there's one organization that has been extremely instrumental in helping the Bay Waveland area bounce back. 
The New York-based group The Giving Circle has made 16 trips to the Gulf Coast since the storm, helping residents refill. They hosted mental health wellness seminars, even Easter egg hunts and Christmas toy giveaways. Tonight at the Silver Slipper Casino, Waveland's Mayor Tommy Longo presented this wonderful group's founder, Mark Bertrand, with a proclamation and key to the city for the organization's wonderful commitment to his city. Three years ago, when the Giving Circle and also the local community made us their sister city, they committed to the long haul till it was over with, the job was over, and they continued to make trips here. They continue to find people in need and continue to help our community rebuild. And Bay St. Louis leaders also presented the group with a proclamation saying that it was Giving Circle Day in the Bay. Uh, great organization. Unbelievable. <laughs>